Welcome to Weld.com. I got to throw this out here for the young guys that are just getting started or the old guys that are just getting started. Um, when we start out processes here at the college, um, people think I'm kind of rough on them or whatever, but I don't care what process we start out with. We need to be able to run straight lines consistently. Straight lines, same width, same height. Doesn't matter what electrode. 6010, 6011, 6013, 7014, 7018, 7024, doesn't matter. Okay, and I see some people that start out and I don't know, I, I give some pretty detailed instructions on how to do this and I do some demos. I ran the first bead of this over here on the edge of the plate. The edge of the plate was straight. Okay, I now have a guide to go off of. I could have started next to this weld in the toe of the weld of this weld right here in the middle of this joint. This is an old training coupon that we just, we're not cutting it down anymore, so that's what we save them for. Sometimes we'll cut them and we'll do fillet welds and lap welds and stuff. So I ran on the edge, I ran the first bead on the edge, okay? And now in order to run straight lines, you know, we want to orient the rod up here. This is a 532nd 7018. I have it set at 160 amps. And I want to orient this where I'm running. I'm going to set it down in the toe of the previous weld. Okay. I want to blend into this weld about halfway up. And I want to run a straight line. Okay. Same width, same height. If I change my travel speed and start going real slow, this bead is going to widen out, okay? If I change my travel speed and race forward, the, bear, the bead is going to narrow up a little bit, and I'm not going to get the blend either. By the way, if you're looking at this on the camera and you're thinking, wow, that's rough, that's, that looks kind of stupid there. Well, it probably does because it's got slag gripped over the edge, and I'll clean that up after a while. Matter of fact, I can clean it up while I'm talking to you. Boom, I'm done. Edge of that weld is kind of just barely hanging over the edge of the uh, plate there, okay? So, bad habits. Bad habits to get into is to weld toward yourself, I think, anyway. Uh, you know, later on, we will learn how to manipulate in all positions and everything, but right now, let's just, let's concentrate on doing this. And hopefully we'll see some slag peel out of it too. Come on, darling, light up here. Don't be that way. Here we go. I need to explain what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling here. I have this rod leaned back probably about 40 degrees or so. I also have it pointed toward me about 10 degrees. Just so I can get that slag running behind me. The whole weld pool, and I'm barely touching the plate. I can feel the plate. Woo, there we go. Welcome to stick welding. I see what happened here. I've got a big old crack in my slag here. It just kind of fell off. So I've got an electrode that uh, Hmm, not good, not good, not good. Got an electrode, you need to check the flux on them. I found some here lately that, I found a 6010 the other day. A, a 6010 the other day that had about, I don't know, about a third of the way up from the start of the rod. I'm gonna leave that little dingus on there and see if I can weld over the top of it. When I restrike this rod, I want to restrike it out here in the direction that I'm going. I want to kind of long arc lift over and bring it back into the top of this pool here and take off again. Yeah, we're back in business. Again, I, was, I think I was just getting ready to say, I'm barely dragging the rod, touching the material, barely. Last thing you want to do with one of these rods is gouge the plate. Now here's something to pay attention to when we come out here and terminate the weld. Please do not get into the habit of running this crater out here on the edge of the weld. 
and blowing it up. Run the rod back in and fill that up a little bit. Please, please do that for me. It's good craftsmanship. Not getting a slag peel, but it doesn't take much to get this off here. Okay. Also, what this is training you, you may not realize it yet, but this is training you to run multiple beads when you go to build up, build up a big fillet weld. By the way, right here is our restart where we stuck the rod. I'm good at sticking rods. I'm gonna run one more. I said I was gonna run one more bead and I'm gonna run two. And the reason is, this plate is now getting saturated with heat. So I'm seeing a slight difference in the size of my weld pool. I'm watching the drag lines or the freeze lines. It's where the weld pool turns from bright red to dark red. Looky there, a little slag peel. I wonder what this stuff tastes like. Better not. Okay, here we go. Here's a little slag peel right here. Looky there. That's always fun. I always like to remove my slag like that. Don't be one to beat the daylights out of your slag. If your slag is not coming off your beads, especially these rods right here, 6013. Uh, 70, 14, 70, 18, 70, 24. It, it, there's no reason to beat the daylights out of it. Matter of fact, it's dangerous. This stuff stays hot for a long time. And I have actually been wearing safety glasses, face shield, and I've got stuff in my eye. So just kind of avoid the projectile part of welding and don't beat on stuff. Plus it makes it a lot quieter in the weld shop and your welding instructor will appreciate it. Nothing makes a welding instructor more irritable than somebody banging around on the plate all the time. Okay, I know this rascal is super hot, super hot. I'm gonna leave the machine the way it is, 160 amps, but I'm gonna go take all the heat out of this plate. Okay, I'm just gonna dip it real quick. I just wanna get a lot of that latent heat out of there. Be right back. Come on. I must have a slag coating over the end of these old rods here. Okay, I went over and cooled the plate off. I left the amperage alone. I'm still running the same size rod. And I can tell this different bead shape. And that's fine. It's close. I can feel the rod touching the toe of the previous well. I'm using it as a guide. If you see me weaving slightly back and forth, because I'm old and not quite as steady as I used to be. Oh yeah, that's my excuse anyway. Wow, it's almost like I'm not going to make it all the way. Oh, well, that was a nice little explosion. Looks like this rod isn't going to make it all the way to the end. Maybe it will. It's going to be pushing it. One thing about it is I'm not going to speed up. If I run out of rod, I run out of rod. Barely made it. That's another thing I see people do. They can see where they're, the, the end of the plate is. And they know they're running out of rods, so they hurry up and get over there and it changes the width of their bead. Don't do it. Don't do it. 
you need to practice restarting anyway. When that electrode exploded a minute ago, it left a nice little, oh, but it's loose. Okay, I'm good. See, I'm not getting a slag peel this time, but my slag is cracked. And it flew right up off there for me. Okay. I'm going to brush the toe of the weld. By doing this method, I know this seems boring, but you need to challenge yourself. Run the exact same straight line. Run as, as straight as you can possibly run. I'm starting out and I've already got a little curvature to mine. I could correct it by, by I could, yeah, I could do it. You know, it's okay to run a straight line, grab a piece of soapstone and leave yourself a guide mark in there. Whether you do it, whether you measure it off of here, just make a straight line so that when you run in the toe of the weld, you can kind of pause or do something and then you'll straighten them right back up. But challenge yourself to run really straight beads because when you get into stacking multiple passes, um, they need to be the same size, same width, uh, here, I'll just throw this out there. Go look at, um, go look at Migman. Let's call out Migman on Instagram. Go look at some of the work he does on enormous beams work and stuff. And look how straight his multiple pass welds are. Absolutely phenomenal quality. So my whole point is when you're learning, challenge yourself to do straight quality work. And from there, we'll teach you how to do some weaves there's very few techniques in welding as far as motions and stuff. Very few of them that you really need to know. I know what the textbook says. I know what the textbook says, but keep it simple, okay? Thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Bob Moffat with Weld.com, welding instructor with Cowley College in Arc City, Kansas. <clears throat> Thanks for watching the videos. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come out every week. Thank you.